Welcome to Faith and Freedom. For the next few minutes, we hope to inform, inspire, and encourage you as we discuss the legal victories and challenges to your fundamental freedoms and religious liberties. Faith and Freedom comes to you from Liberty Council, a civil liberties education and legal defense organization. Join us now as Matt Staber, the President and General Counsel of Liberty Council, explains the latest legal issues all across this country in the courtrooms of America. Liberty Council is winning the battle for your constitutional freedoms. The Ten Commandments raises a ruckus in Giles schools in Virginia and also with our friends, the Americans United for Separation of Church and State. They're not happy that the Constitution doesn't have a separation of church and state, or does it? Well, we'll talk about it. I'm Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council and dean of Liberty University School of Law. Joining me is Matt Barber, director of cultural affairs for Liberty Council and associate dean of the law school. Matt, in this situation regarding Giles County and other situations involving public expressions of religion, whether it's the Ten Commandments in Giles County, uh, Virginia, or whether it's a prayer at some event where you're having a legislative or a city council meeting. The, AC, the ACLU and Americans United are always on the wrong side of things. And we made a public statement regarding this issue, and uh, Americans United came out with a blog, uh, and they are blasting Liberty Council for being right. <laughs> That's exactly right. They uh, took you to task for saying accurately so that the phrase separation of church and state is nowhere to be found in the United States Constitution. They beg to differ. Uh, apparently, they uh, have their copy of that living, breathing Constitution that President Obama talks about, uh, <laughs> that one that apparently uh, things are added and, and, and taken away at, at, at the whim of the person who's reading it. But, uh, boy, I, it uh, prompted me to go through and read the Constitution Constitution again and again. Nowhere could I find well, separation of church and state. Here's here it is. It's uh, we got the Patriots Handbook on American Liberty. In fact, we might want to just send one of these to uh, Barry Lynn at the American United for Separation of Church and State. It has the Constitution in it. And here's the First Amendment: Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press, or the right of the people peacefully to assemble together and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. That's it. That's all of the First Amendment. Now, Barry Lynn's blog actually says that the Constitution does have separation of church and state in it. Well, the Establishment Clause of the United States Constitution, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten words, the entire, not even a complete sentence, that's what uh, Americans United for Separation of Church and State, Barry Lynn, the American Civil Liberties Union, they hang their entire hat, their entire reason for existing is to try to distort and twist the Establishment Clause of the, the, the United States Constitution, the First Amendment. It says simply, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. That's it. No separation of church and state. Nothing in you know, the phrase found anywhere. Let's. But his let's, blog says it's actually there. Yeah, yeah. I, they're, I'm, I'm hoping, well, you know, this could... And, and then he says, I need to get the memo about the separation of church and state being in the Constitution. We just read the First Amendment. <laughs> And it's not there. Well, let's let's break it down. Congress. Who do you think the the framers were referring to when they said that? Well, Congress. Congress. The United <laughs> States Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of re- religion. Well, Matt, what does that mean, respecting an establishment of religion? In the context of the times, in the context of the Anglican Church in Great Britain, in the context of leaving Great Britain to come here for f- uh, freedom of religion, what does that phrase mean, Respecting an well, they knew what religion. an establishment of religion was because some states had established religions. States supported religions. That was the established religion. Everybody had to pay taxes to those particular religions, and the Anglican Church was one of the bigger ones. Uh, the First Amendment just simply said, Congress, you can't do what some of us states are already a doing. federal. You can't have a federal church. Did that strike uh, the, the state constitutions that had an established religion? No, because they can, many established- of them continued with established religions long after the First Amendment. Okay, so Congress, so it was referring only to the federal, to the United States Congress can make no, can make no official state 
religion. That's the totality of the uh, Establishment Clause of the United States First Amendment. Yet somehow, Matt, we have gotten to the point where now that means that a kid can't pray in school, that we can't have a Bible in school. Thomas Jefferson had said on more than one occasion that the Bible should be the primary textbook in all public schools. But how far we've come, how far removed we are from the original intent of our founding fathers, and how confused uh, the uh, Americans United for Separation of Church and State are. Well, the First Amendment is a state's rights amendment, just like the Tenth Amendment. Because when you get to the Tenth Amendment, it says... The powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited to it by the states, are preserved to the states respectively or to the people. In other words, the First Amendment says specifically, Congress, you can't establish a religion. The Tenth Amendment gives a generic, if we haven't given Congress the authority, it remains the rights of the states or the people. It is a states' rights amendment. That's what it's about. It has nothing to do with uh, having the Ten Commandments hung in a courtroom or in a classroom. It has nothing to do with a short prayer to begin a legislative session. And in fact, the New England Primer, the first printed textbook in America, by the mid-1800s sold three million copies. This was a book that was the most influential book in American education, along with the Bible. These two books, the Bible yeah. and the New England Primer were the most influential books in American history for many, many years. And in this book, they learned the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, they learned about the Ten Commandments, and they learned about other religious uh, principles and practices. Well, Matt, I'm confused, because uh, Americans United, in their little memo to you, uh, and, and, and now consider everything you just said, consider what we just read, the Establishment Clause we just read, the entire First Amendment that we just read. Here's their statement to you. Matt, this is, quote, Matt church-state separation really is mandated by the Constitution. The founders said so. And the Supreme Court, dating back at least to 1878, has reaffirmed that wholesome principle again and again. What are they talking about? They're <laughs> ridiculous. You know, <laughs> it's absolutely crazy. Uh, you, you talk about the founders. It was in 1801 that Thomas Jefferson used the phrase separation of church and state for the first and last time. He never said it before. He never said it afterward. It was a letter to the Danbury Baptist. Now, who was Thomas Jefferson in the First Amendment? Nothing. Jefferson was in France as an ambassador to that country. He didn't write the First Amendment, didn't debate the First Amendment, was not part of the discussion of the First Amendment. He was over in another country when it was written, debated, and ratified. And uh, so he had no part in it. And then he wrote this letter to the Danbury Baptist. Well, here's what President uh, Jefferson did as president. He authorized printing Bibles using the federal coffers to pay for Bibles so we could send them to the Indian tribes. When he was a legislator in Virginia, he actually sponsored a bill for a state day of fasting and prayer. And if pastors didn't get in line, they were going to be fined. This is our Thomas Jefferson, the big separationist of church and state issue. This uh, statement by a the Americans United is just... Well a historic. I would encourage, really, Barry Lynn and everybody who's affiliated with Americans United for Separation of Church and State to fill out an application for Liberty University School of Law. Uh, we will consider them uh, to come here and actually learn what the Constitution actually says. <laughs> you mean uh, as a law school student? As a law school student, <laughs> I would encourage them to do that. You know, Matt, they, they took you to task for saying that Americans United is, quote, out to literally destroy America. Well, I'll repeat that. They are out to literally destroy America, to destroy uh, America that we know, the America that our founders knew. They want to recreate and reinvent an America in their own secular humanist self-image. We're not going to let them get away with it. We have the facts. We have truth on our side, and we have the Constitution on our side. All they have is a silly opinion. Give us a call at Liberty Council at 1-800-671-1776 or go to our website at lc.org. This organization is out there trying to literally rewrite American history and eliminate God from any of our public life and square uh, of America. We're about 
uh, uh, find, uh, establishing and preserving those freedoms that our forefathers uh, fought and died for, the liberties and the protections that we have in the United States Constitution. Give us a call and ask for the Patriot's Handbook on American Liberty. We'll send it to you right away. You can read for yourself what Barry Lynn seems to not understand. You can read the Constitution, the First Amendment. You can read the Declaration of Independence. And next time they say that separation of church and state is in the Constitution, pull out your Patriot's Handbook. And then also, we have a $7 contribution, and we will send you this New England primer. This is a great example of what was taught in American public schools. What about the separation of church and state? Pull it out and say, well, here's how they taught the alphabet in public schools for many years up through the early 1900s. In Adam's fall, we send all. Heaven to find the Bible mine, and Christ crucified for sinners died. That's what the students learned in public schools. Get a piece of history. Ask for the New England primer. Go to lc.org today. You have been listening to Matt Staver of Liberty Council. Our hope is to encourage and inspire you to stand up for your faith, family, and freedoms. We can accomplish a lot when we work together. Get informed and get involved today. Sign up for our free monthly newsletter, The Liberator. We will send it out to you free of charge. Stay informed with our Liberty Alert email update. Just click on the website at www.lc.org or call us at 1-800-671-1776. Tune in next time to learn more about your rights right here on Faith and Freedom. 